In 2018, an American spacecraft named Liberty lands on the moon's surface. After landing, the ship unveils the election campaign poster of the current U.S. president. It has been sponsored by the president to promote her re-election campaign. The spacecraft carries two astronauts named Sanders and James Washington. Sanders's mission is to inspect the surface of the moon for chemicals. As he does, he reports back the presence of helium-3 on the surface. He then wanders off a bit further from their ship and loses connection with the mission control. Sander is surprised when he comes across a gigantic helium-3 mine with several people working on it. Astronaut James is near their spaceship, waiting for Sanders. Sanders turns around to call him to come to check the mine, but a person wearing a Nazi armband sneaks up behind him and shoots him dead. A shocked James tries to run to his ship, but the person blows up the whole ship, leaving him no way to return home. He falls on the ground and is surrounded by people wearing Nazi armbands. He is then taken somewhere through the well-built roads inside the mining base. The camera zooms out, showing us the swastika-shaped Nazi base. Somewhere else on the moon, a German teacher named Renata Richter teaches a bunch of school children. As they study, we know that the children were born on the moon and have never been to the Earth. Renata teaches the kids to speak in English, claiming that the language will help when they return to the Earth to help humanity. As it turns out when the Nazis were defeated at the end of World War II, some of them escaped to the dark side of the moon to avoid being killed. The soldiers have since created a colony and have been living on the moon's surface for generations in complete secrecy. The Nazi soldiers bring astronaut James to the Nazi commander, Klaus Adler, at their base. Adler presents James in front of their leader, Wolfgang Kurzfleisch, referred to as Führer by his people. Meanwhile, on Earth, the U.S. president talks about the campaign's failure to her campaign manager. She had chosen James for the mission because he is an African-American so that she can gather more African-American votes in the coming election. The president demands her manager to do whatever she can to cover up the mishap. Back on the moon, Adler fetches Renata to come and speak to James in English. Adler and Renata seem to be in a relationship. James manages to attack the German soldiers and frees himself from captivity but is stuck in the base as he doesn't know the way out. He mistakenly knocks out Adler and comes across a surprised Renata near the airlock. Before the woman can say anything, James pulls down a lever thinking it will open the exit. But instead, it opens the airlock. Both he and Renata are pulled by air pressure. They somehow manage to get inside and close the airlock quickly. By then, Adler has caught up with James and is furious. He points his gun at the man and is about to shoot him, but stops when James mentions he knows the US president. Adler wants to extract information from James, so he sends him to Dr. Richter's laboratory. Adler and Dr. Richter are intrigued by James's cell phone and ask him what it is. James answers it is a phone, similar to their computers. Dr. Richter laughs in disbelief. Apparently, the Nazis are still behind in technological advancements. Dr. Richter shows James a huge machine, claiming that it is a computer and his cell phone is too tiny to be one. Dr. Richter suggests they cut James's brain open to inspect its size, but Adler wants to get information out of him. Back at the United Nations headquarters, an American UN representative gives a detailed explanation of the failed lunar mission. The US president's campaign manager is frustrated because of the campaign failing and scolds her employees for presenting her with terrible PR ideas. At the moon base, Adler visits Renata in her room to propose to her for marriage, which on the moon is called the legal union. He presents her with a confirmation certificate that their DNA matches 97% and reveals his wish to produce perfect offspring with her. He wants to be the most powerful in their base and rule the Earth someday. Somewhere else in the base, we get to see the Lunar Nazis project, the battleship Gerder Demering, which has been under development for 40 years. It is the dream of the Führer Wolfgang Kurzfleisch to complete the battleship. They plan to use the battleship to go back to Earth and conquer it. Dr. Richter finally realizes that the cell phone brought by James has a thousand times more computing power than all their computers. Dr. Richter connects the phone to the battleship and demonstrates its power to the Führer. Everyone is surprised and impressed when the small cell phone starts the battleship, but soon it stops because the phone is out of battery. Adler asks Führer for permission to visit the Earth and fetch more such cell phone. He believes that someday, the Earth will attack them, and they will need the power of cell phones on their side. Führer claims that no one who went to the Earth has ever returned, but Adler is adamant that he will. In the following scene, we see James being kept in a room with speakers near him that blast Nazi propaganda at all times. Renata sneaks in and introduces herself to him. She asks him about his skin color as she has never met a dark-skinned person before. She also reveals that Dr. Richter is her father. He has been injecting James's face with a drug to make him look more Aryan. Renata advises James to pretend to be a Nazi or else he will be eliminated soon. Adler then gets ready to leave for the Earth. Before he departs, 
Dr. Richter presents a now Aryanized James to him. His skin and hair have turned white because of the drugs, and he is now in the Nazi uniform. He, with Adler, Renata, and a guard, leave for the Earth. Their spaceship lands on someone's farm in New York. The owner of the farm shoots one of the guards dead, making the other three flee from the place. Adler steals a vehicle from some men and asks James to take him to the U.S. president. James, with no way out, takes them to the president's campaign manager, Vivian. Adler abducts the manager and throws James out of the vehicle, since he is of no use to him any longer. Adler then asks Vivian the whereabouts of the president. Renata realizes that Adler's mission is to attack the Earth, which doesn't align with what they had been told. She tries to retaliate, but Adler asks her to recite what she always does to her students. Renata starts saying a monologue about their aim to bring peace and prosperity to the world. Vivian is impressed by Renata's oratory skills and devises a plan to use her to help energize the president's re-election. She then takes the duo to meet the president, who approves of the plan. They start a campaign of Nazi-style propaganda to get the president re-elected and are successful in it. Adler and Renata enjoy themselves on the earth so much that they forget their mission. Meanwhile, James has been protesting alone on the streets about the Nazis on the moon. Several days pass, and Renata has been working for the president ever since. One day, she meets James, and the two go to a theater to watch a Charlie Chaplin movie. When she comes out of the theater, she realizes that Nazis were actually horrible people. Meanwhile, Vivian has started to gather feelings for Adler as she finds him charismatic. Vivian starts making out with Adler as the two walk into Adler's office. As they make out, Adler tells her of his plan to invade Earth after eliminating Fuhrer, who is on the moon. When Adler looks up, he sees the moon Nazi Fuhrer and his men in his office. He has come to Earth to find out why Adler is taking so long to retrieve the computers. Fuhrer, knowing Adler's plan, takes the two hostages. Just then, Renata barges into the room and confronts Adler about his mission. She denounces Nazi propaganda, finally realizing Adler was wrong the whole time. Fuhrer has decided to kill all of them, but Vivian manages to get her hands on a gun. She kills Fuhrer and all of his men. Adler realizes that Renata has grown to like the Earthling, so, claiming that she has betrayed the Nazis, he is now about to kill her, but James comes to her aid and the two manage to run away. Adler steals Vivian's iPad and announces himself as the new Fuhrer. He then takes the former Fuhrer's spacecraft to the Earth's orbit, leaving Vivian behind. Adler launches the invasion of Earth using a fleet of space zeppelins and flying saucers. They destroy the Statue of Liberty and, ultimately, the entire city of New York. Renata watches the Nazis destroy the US and devises a plan. She wants to go back to the base on the moon to bring the battleship Gerder Demering and fight the Nazis. The United Nations assembles to discuss the attacks. The American president appoints an American Mars exploration spacecraft, the USS GWB, to fight the Nazis. She appoints Vivian as the commander of the spacecraft, but they soon get overpowered and ask for help from other nations. The spaceships of other countries come to the rescue. Adler returns to the moon after ordering the ships to fight till their last breath. He has brought Vivian's tablet to activate the battleship Gerder Demering. After all the countries assemble their military, they manage to wipe out the Nazi spaceships. Then, the spaceships make their way towards the moon's base. Adler boards the battleship and gets ready to fight the space coalition. Meanwhile, Renata and James sneak into the battleship as well. Renata heads towards the bridge, looking for Adler while James goes to meet Dr. Richter. The human spacecraft arrives at the moon and attacks everyone in the Nazi base. Adler panics as the moon starts to fall and orders his men to start the helium-3 engine. The battleship ventures into the air. Adler then orders for the cannons to be fired, but Earth is on the other side of the moon, out of the firing line. To make the Earth stand in the line of fire, Adler bombs parts of the moon. Meanwhile, Renata plays the Nazi anthem making the Nazi officers perform a salute as she walks towards Fuhrer. James finally manages to disconnect Vivian's tablet, while Renata kills Adler by electrocuting him before he can fire at Earth. Renata and James narrowly escape as the battleship crashes into the moon. The US president congratulates Commander Vivian on their victory, but Vivian mistakenly discloses the presence of large tanks of helium-3 on the moon, and all the UN representatives from different countries hear it. All of them want to claim the tanks as their own, as such a large quantity of helium-3 can supply energy for several years. The UN members get into an argument, and the fleet of spaceships that were working together, turn against each other. They begin to launch missiles at each other's spaceships and chaos ensues again. On the moon's base, Renata walks into her old classroom, where the survivors of the base wait for her. She tells them that they can rehabilitate on Earth in peace. She then reunites with Washington, who has gained his complexion back. The two finally kiss. 
The movie ends as the camera zooms out, showing us the half-broken moon. Click on the left video to watch Hitler time travel to the future and click right to watch if Hitler won World War II.